These are the practice problems for lesson nine. In this first problem, it says, it tells you that these two triangles are similar. And it asks, what's the length of A and what's the length of, I'm sorry, what's the length of A and what's the length of B? And so you're going to use the ratios of the um, sides within each triangle to figure that out. It has the same relationship. So the ratio of 10 to 15. So this side here compared to this side here is 10 to 15 units. And so that simplifies to 2 to 3. Do you see that it's two groups of 5 and three groups of 5? So that ratio is 2 to 3. So you can divide 10 by um, 5 to get to 2. And you can divide 15 by 5 to get to 3. So this relationship is 2 to 3. So 15 is, I'm sorry, 10 is 2 thirds the length of 15. That means that 4 is 2 thirds the length of A. So if you write down that ratio, so 4 to A is the same as 2 thirds. 4 is 2 thirds the length of A. <clears throat> Well, to get to 4, you multiply 2 times 2 is 4. That means that you're going to multiply 2 times 3 to get 6. So the value of A is going to be 6 because 4 is 2 thirds of A. 4 is 2 thirds of 6 right here. So again, the reason I know to do that is I have to get to this 4. 2 times 2 equals 4. And I have to multiply the 3, which is the ratio of these two sides, by this same value, 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. So 6 is equal to A. <clears throat> so now I can use this ratio, 6 to 9, to figure out B. Now it's true, I could have used 4 ninths, ratio 4 to 9, to figure out B. But it's a little bit easier ratio to work with, of 6 ninths, or 6 to 9, because that's the same as 2 to 3. So it's... Um, See the two groups of 3 for the 6 and the three groups of 3 for the 9. So you divide by 3 to get to 2 and divide by 3 to get to 3. So this ratio is also 2 thirds. So 6 to 9 is 2 thirds. That's the same ratio as 15 to B. A little bit harder. So this ratio is 15 to B is equal to 2 thirds. All right, so what do you do? How do you deal with that? So this is 15 is 2 times what value? So 15 divided by 2 is 7 and a half. That means B is going to be 3 of those 7 and a halves. So 3 times 7 and a half is 22 and a half. So this ratio is 15 to 22 and a half. So 15 is 2 7 and a halves, and 22 and a half is 3 7 and a half. It's a little bit harder because you're dealing with the decimal value here. This is 15 over 22 and a half, and that means that the length of B, this length right here, is 22 and a half. You can go through these ratios and test them and try them out. Use a calculator if you want to and get a decimal value. Um, <clears throat> convince yourselves that all of the ratios are equal. Of the ratios of corresponding sides. All right, so 6 is equal to A, and 22 and a half is equal to B. All right, so for this problem, it says you have a triangle, ABC, and a scale factor of 1 fourth. So if the scale factor is 1 fourth, and you use B as the center of dilation, you're going to reduce this size down to 1 fourth of 7, and one fourth of five. So the similar scale factor is equal to one fourth. So I wanted to find one fourth on this line segment. So I used doceri. So remember, a line segment will snap to the center. A line in doceri will snap to the, the midpoint of another line. So I just brought this line close to this line and the midpoint's right there. And I did the same thing with this line. I drew another line here, and I brought this line close to this midpoint, so the midpoint's right there. 
And then I made a copy of this line and moved it down. So now it's parallel. I'm just sliding it down. So I'm actually translating this side down here. That keeps this angle the same as this angle. Keeps this angle the same as this angle. So this triangle down here now is similar to the larger triangle. So it's been scaled down by to one fourth the size. So the center of dilation is B and the scale factor is one fourth. So I have a triangle that's X, Y, Z. And these angles are similar. So if you want to make the argument that how do you know that this triangle is similar to this triangle? Well, these are parallel lines. Remember I made them parallel by sliding this line down here. And so this angle can be slid, translated over here, and this angle is congruent to this angle. So now I have two angles that are congruent. This angle down here is shared by both triangles, so it is congruent to both triangles. So now I have two angles that are congruent. That means this last angle has to be congruent. It has to be the amount to make up to equal 180 degrees. Or you could just say, this, this angle gets translated to here, and it's congruent in that way also. And finally, you could use this idea that this is a vertical angle, and then this is an alternate interior angle by rotating this angle 180 degrees to here. Um, and yeah, the, the line's not drawn through here. It's a little bit harder to see that this is a vertical angle, and this would be also an alternate interior angle. Now the multiplication of the um, sides, this is 7 fourths, 7 times 1 fourth. Remember this length right here is, was 4 units, so this is um, 4 fourths, 1 fourth times 4 or four times one fourth is four fourths. So this length is five times one fourth or five fourths. I think it's easier to see it as five times one fourth rather than one fourth of five, although that is the scale factor, one fourth. So either way, it's good to think of it actually both ways to just work with fractions um, mentally to think about what they mean. This is one fourth of seven. So this is seven fourths. This is seven units. Those units are force. This is five units. Those units are force. And this is four units. Those units are force. So four force, five force, and seven force. Then the problem asks, what's the ratio of the medium size, the medium length to the long side, the long length? Or I'm sorry, it's the other way around the long length to the medium length. So this is seven to five. So that means that this length down here is seven fourths to five fourths. Seven to five is equal to seven fourths to five fourths. Well, it's seven of something compared to five of those same things. So that ratio is seven to five. So these two ratios have to be equal. So the long side compared to the medium side. Corresponding ratios, two corresponding sides of similar triangles. So this is the ratio of the long side to the medium side, and the corresponding ratio of the similar triangle is this long side to this medium side. And the next problem it gives you this triangle and it tells you that these two triangles are similar. Well, you know that these are, um, this triangle is just translated up this line to here. This has a 90 degree angle, 90 degree angle. This angle has to be equal to this angle. So these triangles have to be similar. And so the ratio of this um, short side to medium side is seven and a half to nine. That's the same as D to C, and it wants the value of D to C. Well, that value is equal to 7.5 to 9. It's that ratio. Well, how do you get this to a little bit easier numbers to work with? 
A way to get rid of that seven and a half is to multiply it by two. That's 15 and two times nine is 18. And now you can simplify that. A little bit easier to simplify. Um, this is five groups of three. This is six groups of three. So divide by three to get to five, divide by three to get to six. So this ratio is five, six, simplified. So this is the answer they actually have in the text, five, six. But if you look at these lengths, um, and that's that's a correct answer, but also any ratio that's equivalent to five, six is also a correct answer. Well, if it asks for what's the an estimate of the actual lengths of D and C, you want to observe that D is a little bit longer than seven and a half, and C is a little bit longer than nine. So if I drew these this triangle here, and I moved it down to here, you can see that this side D is a little bit longer than seven and a half, and this side C is a little bit longer than nine. Well, seven and a half to nine is five, six. So how do I get a side that's a little bit longer? This is the side that's D. So, so this is where the five would go, but you want something that's a little bit longer? Well, you multiply it by two. Two times five is 10 and two times six is 12. So more than likely, I'm, I'm not measuring these, but more than likely, this length is actually 10 units and this length is actually 12 units. So seven and a half to nine, that's the same as five, six. Remember we went through this um, step down here where we multiplied this by two to get to 15 18 and to simplify it to five, six. And then two times five is 10, two times six is 12. So the corresponding lengths of the corresponding sides, more than likely, are 10 and 12. It could be some number less than that, um, less than 10, but larger than seven and five tenths. But more than likely, they're gonna use whole numbers. That's gonna be the answer. But the actual answer they have in the text is five sixths. Okay, the last problem has this triangle and it says, what's the scale factor to take this larger triangle to this smaller triangle right here? And what's where's the center of dilation? Well, the center of dilation is right here and it's gonna move this side to what fraction? Well, this is one, two, three, four, five. So this length here is one fifth of this length. So you're making this smaller by one fifth times the length. And this is one, two, three, four, five. So this length is one fifth, this length along the horizontal side here. So the scale factor is one fifth and the location of the center of dilation is negative one, one. All right, so these are the practice problems for lesson nine.